Hi! So yesterday I did a short video and today I'm going to do a longer one though. But the shorter ones are relevant. I know they seem kind of out of place. I'm going to do those a little bit more because something will happen and it'll just spark a thought or something. And to give an example of emotional connectedness or communication, something that has to do with relationships, all of that to me is relevant to self-love. When we learn how to communicate more effectively with other people, when we learn how to relate to other people, show compassion, empathy, when we make those connections within ourselves, it helps us connect with other people. So to me, all of that is relevant. So if I make those quick little videos, it's because something happened and it's like, oh, you know, I have a thought. Let me just get it out real quick. But honestly, I like the longer videos, too, because me personally, when I'm listening to different people on YouTube, I look for the videos that are like 45 minutes to an hour long so that I can really get into it. And I think some of you are the same way. And again, I'm allowed to listen to it at work, so it's a lot easier for me to to get to do that. But today, I just really wanted to talk pretty openly about relationships, companionship, love and energy, all that. Just been having some thoughts about it. It's, I think, you know, when I talk about getting in touch with our feelings, our emotions, feeling our feelings, I'm not talking about sensitivity. And again, it's more for me personally, I believe that we are energetic beings and energy is emotion. It's an emotion in motion. (laughs) And so when I think about the flow of energy, that's why when we deny how we're feeling and we, in a moment, we just kind of withdraw or we cut certain things off real quick because we don't want to connect with the feeling part of it. And we don't even realize that a feeling part exists because we're so used to blocking it So when I gave that example on that short video of, I don't care, I don't care. Oh, this person rejected me, whatever, I don't care, fuck them. That's not how we really feel. That's us actually, because something probably made us feel slightly rejected, which that's normal. And it's okay to feel that way. You don't have to sit there and dwell on it for days and days. That's not what I'm suggesting, but in a moment, Let it connect with you because it wants to, because it exists. And so the minute we say, I don't care, leave me alone, whatever, we withdraw, we avoid, we put up the wall, the defenses, all of that goes up automatically. So we're not letting anything in. It's There's a disconnect. And so what I'm continuing to try to get us to do is see in these little moments that don't even seem like a big deal. There are opportunities for you to continue to connect because you're connecting with yourself. And I always talk about the void, the void that we feel and nobody can fill our void. And so then people also ask, well, how do I fill that void? And it's because we can't necessarily just start performing now. Well, I'm going to do really good at work or really good in school so that I can try to fill this void. The void is us. Again, that's the way I see it. Let me talk about energy real quick. And the reason why I think it's important to understand it, at least this is the way I believe it. This is how I live my life. But energy, if we are energetic beings and we have the ability to raise our consciousness, to become aware of things, why? So that we can continue to connect with things on a deeper level, ourselves and other people. I'm not going to connect to a rock on a deep level. No. But I can appreciate that the rock exists. So we're talking about us really within ourselves and then how we then relate and relationship with other people because that just makes it even stronger and creates more of a depth and a bond. And again, I'm not just talking about romantic situations. I'm talking about everybody. We're all connected and I definitely believe that also. But so we're made of energy and to me, energy is never created nor destroyed. It just gets transformed. 
And so you think about this energy that's constantly flowing. And then we talk about frequency raising our vibrations, which just means transforming an energy into something of a more positive nature. So for example, when I'm feeling not good enough, or maybe I felt rejected for some reason. And so all of a sudden, how do I start feeling? I start feeling like I'm not enough. Oh, well, they rejected me, obviously, because there's something wrong with me, which is not true. That's not why we necessarily get rejected. And even if somebody doesn't like something about us, that still doesn't mean that we're defective. That still doesn't mean that we're not lovable. We're lovable no matter what. Are there things that we can probably be working on? Yeah, probably. <laughs> but that's for us to become aware of and continue to work through these things. Because, you know, let's face it. If Let's say somebody asks me out on a date and they have a characteristic trait that I just cannot vibe with. I mean, let's say that they're an angry person glass is always half empty. So every time we hang out, they're always complaining. Nothing ever goes right. They're just, they're constantly talking shit about everybody in their life. I'm not going to keep hanging out with somebody that does that. I'm definitely not going to date somebody who does something like that. Nothing wrong with that person. Do I think that they're in high vibes? No. So are they maybe valuing themselves as much as they could be? Probably not because they seem kind of angry and anger is a secondary emotion. We know that. And then when we're constantly saying negative things about everybody and everything else, that definitely creates low vibe, a low vibe situation that lowers our energy to be around it even lowers our energy. So I wouldn't say to that person, go fix yourself. I would say I'm not interested in dating you. And if they ask, I would be honest and say, you know, I just, you seem a little upset. You seem a little bitter or, you know, I just, you don't really say a lot of positive things. And in that moment, if it clicks in their head and they're like, oh man, you know, you're probably right. Maybe I should work on that. That's great. That's for them because I'm not forcing it and they don't even have to. So it's like if somebody asks you a specific question, you can answer that. But it's not for me to say, yeah, go raise your damn vibration so that we can hang out. No. But I will tell you, I don't want to be around certain energy. It's not a judgment. It does lower my vibration to be around that kind of that kind of person, that kind of personality. Because when we're angry and we when we're constantly saying negative things about other people, for example. What does that mean? It means we're probably not feeling good about ourselves. I'm going to slam you and talk shit about you because it's going to make me feel good about myself. And that's, does that sound like a high vibe situation? Again, probably not. So we need to think about these things and make those connections. And again, if you don't want to, don't. But if you're wondering why you're maybe not as happy or you don't seem as fulfilled as you could be, it goes back to an energy thing for me. And that, again, goes back to self-love. It's every time we choose high vibrations, every time we choose to be in higher frequencies, every time we choose to change our perception and see things in a better way so that it feels better for us, so that it's not not only negative, but so it doesn't make us angry or sad. We try to look at things so that we aren't feeling those things, but not in a fake way. It's just you. we change our attitude. We change the way we see certain things. That's, again, what we're learning on here, too. But so if we're made of energy and the energy is constantly flowing and we have a void within that energy, for me, what that means is I'm not valuing myself. I'm not loving myself as much as I could be in moments. And they're moments, which is why I always say things happen in steps. We always want to do this one big thing that's going to completely change our lives. And then everything is just going to be magically better. And that is not the right way to look at it. And I know because I used to look at things like that, too. It's like, can't just can't something right happen and then it's just going to be great and I'm going to feel better. No, because then something else is going to happen and you're not going to feel good about it. 
So we need to learn really how to get ourselves through those situations and then get ourselves back into valuing who we are and really seeing things differently and making better choices and gaining that strength to be able to even do that. And all of that's relevant, but all of that requires steps and not only steps, but mindfulness. It's the little things that happen in our everyday life that we probably don't even pay attention to sometimes because we're just like, we just go through our day. Oh, I'm just going to get up. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to be at work and I'm going to go to lunch and then I'm going to be bored. I'm going to come home. I'm going to cook dinner. I'm going to watch TV, go on TikTok, and then I'm just going to go to bed. And I'm going to do the whole thing tomorrow, the same exact thing. And it's very easy to get caught up in that cycle. Remember, lather, rinse, repeat. Is that the kind of life that you want? It, to me, that's very draining on the soul because the soul is like, oh, I want to play. I want to vibrate in high frequencies. I want to connect. I want to love. I want to show compassion, creativity, imagination. I mean, the soul is just bursting with this energy that wants to flow and connect in such a beautiful way. And we're the ones that stop that from happening by creating the walls by withdrawing and avoiding. We do that. And so when I'm telling you guys, let's connect in these little moments, it's because it's those little moments that are going to make a difference. Not right away, though. See, that's the thing is we're looking for instant gratification. And that's not what this process is about. For me personally, and I used to ask my therapist this all the time, is there light at the end of this tunnel? And she would always look at me and say, yes. You know, when you start to feel better, it's not going to it's not going to feel so harsh and so negative for you. And she was right. But it took a long time, a lot of wounds I had to heal before I started to even feel better. And even now, I realize that life is throwing the same exact shit at me. It's just I I know how to handle it a lot better. And so I feel a lot better every single day, not because different things are happening. The same exact things happen, the same situations, the same type of people I come across. It's just me. What's different is me and how I handle it. And can I set that boundary? Am I going to feel that feeling or am I going to block it out, avoid it, and then go do something to distract myself, which is what we do so easily. And so we really have to really, really be mindful of all of those types of things. And so when I tell you little examples, feel your feelings. It's because in that moment, it might have been just for a second that you allowed it, but you do it for a second and the next time it'll be two seconds. And then the next time it'll be three seconds and eventually it'll be a minute. And then you'll learn how to appreciate those emotions more instead of being scared of them. And then I know a lot of people, I'm not scared of my emotions. I'm not scared of certain things. Then why do you block it out? We don't push things out of our lives that we aren't scared of or intimidated by or something. It's probably making us feel less than in some way. So what do we do? We get rid of it. But when we learn how to feel those feelings and connect with it, we realize that, you know, this is a me issue. This is about me. So what is it about me that's feeling less than right now? And why am I feeling that way? But in order to answer the why, you have to feel the feeling. If you just sit there and say, no, I'm not feeling that. I'm totally fine. You never get into the healing work. You never get into making those connections within yourself. So again, when I'm talking about the void within us, and we all have it because we're all human, and our souls are energy. Our souls, to me, are energy and love. But there's still the human part of us that's ego and pride, and pride and ego stop us from doing a lot of things. That's where we come in and we try to act all big and bad, and I don't give a fuck, and nothing bothers me, and fuck you, and... We just end up getting angry, getting into fights or talking shit, complaining, just being nasty in some way. And that's all low vibe because there's nothing loving or connecting about that. 
if I'm yelling at you because of something that happened, I'm not even communicating with you. All I'm doing is throwing words at you and attacking you. And I'm guarding myself because actually I'm probably something probably hurt my feelings, but I don't want you to know that my feelings are hurt. So what am I going to do? I'm going to puff myself up. I'm going to make you look stupid. I'm going to attack you so that I don't have to feel less than in that moment or the pain or whatever it was. And we do that all the time. So what I encourage you to do is to just really stop and pay attention in these moments. And it seems silly to feel these feelings or we think we are feeling feelings and we're really, we're not. We're just, we're pissed off usually or irritated, drained, tired. Those are not feelings. Like they're secondary emotions. I can say that. Yeah. But that's not the core emotion. Really, that's not what we connect with. It's like it's a dead emotion to me almost. Because there's something behind it. And if we can't connect to it on a deeper level, how is it really raising our vibrations? I guess it's kind of how I'm looking at it at this point. And so we spend so much time and so much of our energy trying to block things out of our lives that we never allow it in. So I'm going to give you a slight example, and I, I hope you guys can understand this because I for some reason I just started thinking about this this morning. Because love, I'm not a huge romantic person. I've said that before, but I do believe in companionship. And I always have, no matter how dark my life has been or how certain things have happened. I've had boyfriends pass away. And I mean, you know, those things aren't pleasant. But I never not believed in a soulmate, a partner, a life partner, whatever term you want to use for it. Somebody that's made for you. I've always believed in that. Even when I was little, I always believed in that because it just makes sense to me. It makes sense that the universe, God, creator, whatever word you want to use for it, would have your perfect person in mind. And I don't mean that in a religious kind of a way either. It's more I do believe that there's somebody out there that's a good fit for us. And before we find that person, I think other people are a good fit for us at a certain time in our lives to teach us different things. And that's not a bad thing. It's just at some point we meet the person that's really going to be a fit for us forever. And I do believe in that. I believe in forever partnership. But I know a lot of people can get down on love. Or we think, I don't need it, or I don't want it, or, you know, I'm just going to stay in a shitty relationship and whatever. It's, it doesn't bother me. I'm used to it. And we settle. A lot of us settle. And that really, that really drains the soul. It really does. Because the soul, again, it wants to love. It wants to be in high frequency. And when you're settling with somebody that you don't even like to be around, that you don't even really connect with, your soul is just, it's sad. A lot, I'm sure. And I can relate. You know, I've been there. And so one of my best friends, my best friend, I've known him almost my whole life. And he used to be so down on love. And he still kind of is bah humbug. You know, I'm never going to find anybody. I don't even want anybody. So he's never really in a relationship. Slept around a lot. You know, all that. He's a good person. It's just, And I know his past. So I understand where that comes from. It's fear. Well, if I get close to somebody, they're going to see me. If I get close to somebody, what if they reject me? It goes back to those fears, which are valid, but they're our fears. And we have them for a reason. And the reason why we fear that we're going to get rejected or that people aren't going to like us is because there's still a part of us that, that believes that we're not very likable. It really is. And I know some people don't think that or no that's not what it is I could care less if people like me or not then why do you withdraw from people human nature we want to be around people we're social beings by nature we we really are we really are and so when we don't want to be around people there's usually something going on and it's usually a fear it usually goes back to I don't even think people want to be around me and I can definitely relate to that I talk about that a lot But so going back to my friend, 
you know, he's kind of bah humbug on love. And we used to talk about it all the time because I've been the same way. But there's two times since I've known him that I've seen him really happy, really light up. He's in positive vibes and his frequency is up and he just, he seems happy, what we would consider happy. And it was the two times that he actually met somebody that he really, really liked. And I could tell that he liked them because of the way he would talk about them. And, you know, he tried to hold back and, you know, tried to be all big and bad. And, you know, it's like, whatever, whatever. It's not a big deal. Dude, I'm your best friend. I can tell when you're bullshitting. And so, and then finally he has to just admit it because it's like, yeah, you like her. And so I'm saying that because I really think that we, by nature, we do want to be loved by somebody else and have that companionship and have that romantic partnership in that sense. I really do believe that that raises our vibrations. However, I know I also say nobody else can fill our void. And so here's where I'm going to kind of go off in a different direction. They're not here to fill our void. Somebody, a companion is not here to fill us up. Although I do think that they can bring a lot of joy to our lives. They do. When you're with somebody that you really like and you get along with them really well and you just, everything just kind of clicks. Your day goes better. You guys are texting. You're happy to hear from them. You're happy to be able to go and spend time with them. That definitely raises our vibration and that's totally fine to have that. And I use my friend as an example is just because when he's not with somebody or aside from those couple times, he just, he's very sad, very lather, rinse, repeat. How's, how's everything going? Good work, same shit, different day. And that's it. That's the only response I'll get. I'm just like, okay. But when he's with somebody, those, when he was dating those two uh, women, it was, he was excited. He was happy. He was trying not to sound excited, but he was. And I saw that. And I think sometimes it's hard for us to admit that people make us feel good or, you know, yeah, I do like this person. And yeah, you know, they kind of do make me smile. And, you know, they do bring joy to my life. But it's okay that people will do that. And I hope that we can all find that. I hope you all find that. I hope you have it. If you don't, you will. But we will because we're going to continue to work on ourselves because otherwise, what? We attract what we are. So now going back to energy, you know, I always talk about shame and abuse because like attracts like. And I know people probably disagree with that because they're like, oh, the person that I'm attracted to, they're nothing like me or they're nothing like my parents or, you know, we don't have that same dynamic. And what we don't realize is it may not be the same exact type of relationship or they may not have the same exact qualities or characteristics of our parents or guardians, whoever raised us. But the dynamics will be similar. Like codependency, it's not just about being addicted to drugs and alcohol like a lot of people think. So let's say you grew up with an addict and that doesn't mean you're going to date an addict or an alcoholic necessarily, you probably might dabble in that, but you could also go the complete opposite way and date somebody who's completely straight laced. They don't ever do anything wrong. They're totally, nobody's perfect, but the person that's like the overachiever, the perfectionist, I guess. But see, to me now they're a perfectionist. Why? For a reason. Usually we want everything to be perfect and we're striving to always have people see us as good because usually it's because somebody didn't see us as good growing up. And again, a lot of that happens in households with that when you're dealing with addiction, because when you're living with an addict, if any of you have ever lived with an addict, you know, you always come second to that to the addiction, whatever it is. It could be gambling, drugs, alcohol, TV. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is, you're always in second place. You're never good enough. You're never as good as the addiction. That's how it feels. Because like, well, why don't you want to hang out with me? Oh, you're going to go and do drugs instead? Oh, okay. And so for kids, yeah, we start to grow up and it's like, what's wrong with me? Or where, where do I fit into your picture? And how, how come you don't want to connect with me? 
And so again, go back to how that feels. What does that feel like? It feels like I don't matter because I didn't matter to you at this moment. You didn't want to spend time with me. So we grow up feeling not good enough, feeling like we don't matter. So we may not date an addict, but we might date somebody else who also feels like they don't matter, except they show it by performing well. Let me be really good at whatever it is that I do. Let me have a lot of money. Let me have a fancy car so that I seem lovable in some way. Same thing. That's a dynamic. That's the same type of codependent dynamics. What we do is we get with that person and then we try to people please. That's just an example. Because energetically, we the wounding is still there. So remember I said that energy cannot be destroyed, but it can be transformed. We can transform it and make it something more positive, meaning we can get ourselves into higher vibrations, but we don't do it by skipping steps, by acting like things didn't bother us. That's never how you transform energy. You don't transform something by ignoring it. Tell me how that works. How does something change because you ignored it? Something changed because you looked at it, because you connected with it, because you realize something and you change your perspective or you had to make an effort to turn it into something better. You had to do that. It's an effort steps. So again, when we ignore stuff, we're not transforming anything. We are holding on to that energy and we're keeping it the same, which is again, why like attracts like. And so people think, oh, I'm in a better place because I just woke up one day and said, well, today I'm just going to try not to be attracted to crackheads. But energetically, you're still attracted to crackheads or addicts or people that are going to always put you in second place. It doesn't have to be drugs or alcohol. Once again, have you dated somebody that worked 20 hours a day? You're in second place. It's like, honey, can you please, you know, Please not work so much. I really miss you and I really want to spend time with you. But you're always at work. No, I have to work because I have to make money because, you know, I have to pay the bills and I'm providing. So, no, I have to work. No, you come second. Gosh, what is the, how does that feel? Makes me feel like I'm not important to you. Makes me feel like you don't love me. Makes me feel like I don't matter. And when were you also feeling that way growing up? <laughs> So just, again, I want to put it in these perspectives for you so you can kind of make these connections. You don't have to believe it. Look at the person you're dating. What are they like? And you might be happy with somebody. I don't know. Maybe you're not. It depends. Maybe you're single. I don't know. But who have you dated and what have they been like? That's, I always tell you guys to look at that because that's kind of going to tell you where you're at energetically also. Because once we become adults, we're not kids anymore looking for mommy and daddy's approval. Now we're adults looking for mommy and daddy's approval still, but in an adult form. And so how do we do it as an adult? We do it now in our romantic relationships, mostly. We can do it through friends, coworkers, triggers come out in all different ways. People reflect different things about us. That's always going to be true. But where the dynamics come out the most are going to be in romantic relationships because that's the person you live with. That's the person you're closest to. That's the person you should probably share the most with. So it's not surprising that the dynamics are going to come out in that type of relationship. So there, nobody's here to fill our void. But so now if I'm holding on to this false belief of I'm not good enough, if I still believe that, And if I'm still, if that is still my energy, because I'm not learning how to value myself above that, then that's, again, what I'm going to continue to attract. But I also personally believe that the universe, the universe didn't, you know, this is no coincidence that we're attracted to certain people or that things go a certain way. And I know some people believe that, but I do not. I believe that in divine timing, I think things happen for a reason. I think that there's a plan for all of us. I believe we've already been here, been there, done that. Our energy, it just keeps going. So we've lived multiple lives. We've already done this life, I believe. So we already kind of have a blueprint for what we've done, where we're going, what we're going to do. Yeah, we have choices. 
But these choices are also influenced by our soul self, our souls, what's been around. Our energetic being is what continues to go, not this physical self. It's our soul that knows more than we are even conscious of. But that consciousness comes in when we start looking at that, when we start really going to the depths of ourselves and figuring things out within us. Because it's not for me to figure you out. It's for me to figure myself out and share that with you. That's the difference. And so, again, it's not a coincidence to me that energetically we attract what we are because that's kind of the universe telling you in a way that, hey, this is something you need to work on. Why are you dating alcoholics? Do you see yourself valuing who you are because you're dating people that could kind of care less about you and they'd rather get drunk? Nothing against the alcoholic, but you again, you will be second best always. The addiction will always come first to somebody who is still struggling with addiction, but we can get through addiction. Addiction can be healed. Yes, it can, because I have struggled with it myself. It can be healed, but until it is, the addiction is always going to come first. But once we start healing that, And so again, for me, I've been very codependent and I'm very open about that. I date addicts. I've not now, but I have dated addicts. And if it wasn't, if they weren't an addict per se, I still did went into people pleasing mode constantly. And, you know, I made a video about kind of balancing out feminine and masculine energy. And I really liked reading up about that because it kind of put it into a really nice perspective for me because it's not, oh, I'm feminine. So I'm cooking and cleaning and incorporating masculine energy where I'm fighting and being aggressive. That's not what it means. It means being creative, using your imagination, but then also learning how to take steps, take action to get something done, making an effort. And we need both. We can't just be totally in la la land all the time. We also have to be grounded and know where we're going and make a plan and put it in motion. Balance. And so it's not about gender. That's not what it's about. It's about balancing out two different parts of our being. And I really, I suggest you read about that, the feminine and masculine energy. It's really interesting. But so we need that. We need, again, we need constant balance, but it's also Again, that nobody can fill our void. And so it goes back to then how do I do that? And it goes back to then us learning how to balance all of this out. And so going back to the energy, if I'm codependent because I'm still not feeling like I'm good enough, do you know how that's going to play out in my relationships? How that has played out in my relationships, let me tell you, is... I was always an overgiver. And however that's going to look, it it could be in a sexual sense, it can be not money, like I'm not giving anybody money, I'm not doing that. Although some people will do that. It's more that I kept trying to show these guys, whoever I was dating or whoever I liked, I kept trying to show them how awesome and amazing I was because I didn't believe it. And the reason why I'm saying that is obviously when we like somebody, we want to impress them. We want them to see our good side. We want them to see our good qualities. (laughs) And that's okay. That's fine. I'm not saying don't do that. Don't show up on a date and be frumpy, sloppy, and not care. And just, just, that's not, don't go to a date looking a hot mess. Don't put all your negative things out there. Don't start bringing up childhood trauma right away. That's not what I'm saying. But what I mean and what codependency, a lot of it is, is that at our core, I'm not feeling good about myself. And so I'm going to do whatever I can to give to the other person, to give to this guy so that he thinks that I'm pretty cool, so that he will accept me. And so whatever, again, whatever that's going to look like, if he texts me, I'm going to make sure I text him back right away or You know, I'm going to make sure that everything I say is super like, like I'm even going to say things a certain way to make myself sound better. You know what I mean? (laughs) And 
for me personally, it was rescuing. What can I do for you? Or, oh, you need a ride? Oh, for sure. I'll pick you up or whatever it was that I would offer to do. And I always thought I was being the the perfect date. And the truth is I wasn't valuing myself because you know what? I'm important. And maybe, maybe I can give you a ride if I'm not doing something and maybe I need to be somewhere. So guess what? I'm more important and I am, and you are too. We are more important than our counterparts. And that's not narcissistic. That's not selfish. We have to love ourselves the most because when we are loving ourselves the most, we're loving other people the most. We really are. And again, so I'm going to go back to that example. So if I'm not loving myself, if I'm not valuing who I am, I'm spending my the entire relationship trying to prove myself to somebody by performing, doing well in whatever it is, or looking super great all the time, or just whatever it is so that they are constantly looking at me as if I'm good enough. And okay, I will accept you because you're pretty today. Okay, you're acceptable. Okay, you you have a really good job and you're making good money. Okay, then I accept you and you're good enough to be my girlfriend or my date. Okay, you're willing to pick me up and give me rides and you were even willing to let me borrow money and you're always there. You jump when I say jump, so you're good enough. That's fine. I'll accept you today. That's what I did so much. And why? Because the energetically, I was allowing that, first of all, because energetically, I was still not believing that I was good enough. I still have moments now where I get triggered and I start to feel the shame. I still have moments where I'm not always feeling great about who I am or the sadness takes over and all of a sudden, again, maybe something triggered me. And so it took me to that dark place where I just started to feel unlovable. And that's fine because that's always going to happen. And the reason why I believe that that always happens to show us where we're at now, what are you going to do with this situation this time? You just got triggered and you're not feeling good enough. Are you going to continue the people pleasing now in this moment? Or are you going to take a step back, feel what you need to feel, feel that sadness, feel the unpleasantness, and then transform it and gain strength and now turn it into something more positive, a higher frequency. Do you see the difference? So let's say now, if an addict, for example, asks me out, I wouldn't do it. And the reason is because I don't feel the need to to change anybody, to fix anybody, which was, oh my gosh, that was my big thing. But why? When we're constantly focused on other people, I'm going to fix you. No, you need to be rescued. No, you have issues. What did that do? It just totally took the spotlight off of me and I put it right on you because I don't want you to see that I have issues, (laughs) that I'm really the one that has a lot of issues. And we do that so well. We do it and we don't even realize we're doing it. Because we do look at other people. You are a hot mess. And that's probably a true statement. But if I'm focusing on that, it's probably because I'm trying to distract myself from that reflection within me. So we need to be careful with that. So again, going back to kind of codependency and that energy, it's in a moment where I'm not feeling good enough. I take that now and I connect with it. I connect with how it feels And again, I know you guys are like, why would I want to sit and feel like I don't matter? Why would I want to get into that funk? It's not a funk. It's a funk when we sit there and we start thinking about it and having those repetitive thoughts. And then we start believing those thoughts. And then we just continue the thoughts for hours. I mean, we can continue thinking negatively for days in a row. And I know some of you can relate to that. That's not a feeling. That's the difference also. What I'm trying to get you guys to do is step out of thought mode and go into feeling mode because as soon as you feel it, automatically you can transform it. If all I do is keep thinking about it, well, I don't think I'm good enough right now. Okay, well, why? Why don't I think I'm good enough? Well, because of this, this, and that. Okay, well, this guy rejected me, so, well, maybe it's true. Maybe I'm not good enough. 
well, you know what? Come to think of it, this other guy kind of said something similar. Maybe I'm not good enough. And we just start thinking things and we'll keep thinking it, whether it's true or not. And it never transforms. So it never has a chance to get into high vibes because we're keeping it in low vibes by overthinking it. And there's never a solution because we don't how can I believe that I'm good enough if I keep thinking about how I'm not good enough or how I keep messing up or I'm focusing on this other person so that I'm not looking at my stuff? So you see what I mean? So when I'm telling you in these moments, feel those feelings, the shame's kicking in, feel it. As soon as you feel it, you connect with it and then you can turn it Now turn it into something positive. You know what? I'm not feeling good enough right now. The shame just kicked in. But you know what? I know where this comes from. And I don't have to believe it. And I don't have to overthink it. And I don't even have to keep looking at it. In that moment, I can feel it and cry if I have to, whatever. Connect to the emotion, the energy. Once the energy flows, you allow it to flow. It's no longer stuck. Now it continues to flow and you can move on. Fine. I wasn't feeling like I mattered. I got triggered. I started to feel defective. I started to feel empty. That's fine. Feel it. And as soon as I felt it, as soon as I feel it, again, I'm connecting with it and saying, this is okay. Validating those feelings. It's okay. Now let's move on. Now that's, let's go into something else. This is not true. Whatever I'm thinking about myself, it's not true. These negative thoughts, they're not true. And we'll keep thinking until we start feeling. Once you feel, you shift your focus and it becomes an emotion. And once it's, you feel it, it can be released. And again, I know some of you are looking at me like that doesn't make sense. When you practice it, though, it does. Have you ever, I don't know, like let's say something happened, it really hurt your feelings. And so the first thing you want us to do is yell, be nasty, say nasty things. It's what we do. It's the defenses go up automatically. It's like, ah, I need to be strong and I don't want to be vulnerable. But was there ever a time where you actually allowed yourself to be a little vulnerable and you were just like, it didn't feel so good like, wow, that actually really hurt my feelings. And you connected with it and you released it. You cried or whatever it was that you did in that moment. But I bet you didn't keep thinking about it in the same way afterwards if you were really vulnerable in that moment. This is about me. This is my stuff. Like, okay. It's not true. I am lovable and I am good enough. So now where do you want to go from that point? And that's where we go. That's how we transform the energy. We don't transform it by pretending like it's not there. You, that is not, once again, how do you transform something that you don't look at? How does something change if we never do anything with it? Tell again, answer that question. (laughs) And that's what you're doing. Every time you avoid withdrawal, put the wall up, block it out in some way, whatever. We we get really creative with how we do these things. And we rationalize it so much. Oh, I'm not, no, I'm not withdrawing. I'm just busy. No, I'm not trying to avoid this or myself. No, I'm just, you know, I have to work. No, I'm not trying to avoid this. I just, you know, I don't have time for this right now. <laughs> and we say this and we keep, and we just keep it going. And so nothing ever changes. How is your energetic being supposed to transform if you don't actually take steps to allow it to transform? And again, if energy is emotion, emotion in motion, how does it transform if you don't allow it to flow? You are in control of that. Other people aren't. You are. I am. So now again, going back to codependency. So in a moment, just because I'm not feeling, sometimes I get, I again, still get triggered. I share that with you guys. I'm not feeling good about myself right now. Or you know what? I feel a little less than. What's different now versus a few years ago is that now I can look at that 
And since I'm aware of it and I've made that connection and I've, and I allow myself to feel those feelings, I can quickly in that same moment say, you know what? It's totally okay that you're feeling this way. It's totally okay. Validating our own feelings really helps to fill in that void. First of all, it really does. You, not other people, you validating your own feelings. This is okay. It's okay. I'm feeling this way. This is okay. This, it doesn't make it true. It doesn't mean I'm not lovable. It just means I'm having a moment. Validate your own feelings. Really, that helps fill in that void. But so in that moment, I'm validating my feelings. And since I brought it out in the open and I'm being honest about it and vulnerable with it, now I can transform it. Now it can change into something better, something more positive. So now I can get myself into a better mood because it's like, you know what? I know that that's not true. So I'm going to go and play some music that I love, or I'm going to go dance, or I'm going to go do something now to kind of get me into a better mood. And I'm going to now think differently of the situation and think more positively about myself because I can do that now. So I just transform that energy completely. So guess what that means? That means now I just raise my vibration. So I'm still in high frequency. So would I still date an alcoholic or a crackhead? No, just because I had a moment where I wasn't feeling good enough, I still wouldn't because I'm not needing that energy to kind of show me where I'm wounded. I already know where I'm wounded and I'm healing those wounds. And now I know how to heal those wounds. And so a crackhead or an addict or whatever wouldn't serve any purpose in my romantic dating life because I'm not. I know where it comes from now. I know why I was doing that at the time, as obvious as it seems to me now. And it seemed obvious, I'm sure, to all of my friends at the time. But it was not obvious to me because I was broken. And I know I shouldn't say that, but I'm going to use that word right now. I was broken. Hit rock bottom. I did not like who I was whatsoever. And I could not make that connection I just couldn't because I wouldn't allow myself to because it was so painful already, things that I had experienced. So then for me to admit that I'm broken and that I have issues and maybe I don't love myself, do you know how much worse that would have made me feel in that moment? And I got to tell you, it did because once I got into therapy and I started to see that, I had to admit that. Didn't make it true. I'm still lovable, but I was not acting in a loving way towards myself. So once again, what was I going towards? What was I doing with guys? And it goes back to, for me, the people pleasing. Again, codependency. I was over giving. So I never even allowed myself to receive. And I see that a lot in relationships. And I'm I'm talking about that right now because I think a lot of people can relate. We think that we're in these relationships that are kind of, they're okay. They're pretty cool. There's maybe a lot of passion, a lot of fighting. And we're like, yeah, that kind of keeps it exciting. It really doesn't. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of times we are in relationships that are one-sided. And what I mean by that is we are trying to every day prove to the other person that we're good enough and seeking their approval and their acceptance. And we're not realizing it because I know every single person out there is like, I don't do that. Everybody says that. I don't do that. I don't try to seek anybody's approval. As you drive your fancy car, buy your fancy purses, wear your fancy clothes, and we're always trying to look cute, which is, you know, that's fine. We can dress up. We're allowed. We want to look nice. That's fine. Or we are always presenting the really great side of us. Are you ever talking to people about your past or certain things that you've done that you're not proud of? Probably not. You're probably only telling people all the good stuff. But you're not seeking approval. It's like, yeah, we're kind of seeking that approval. Sometimes we're not realizing it. And so that's what we need to become honest about. First of all, to in order to transform it. And so once again, if I'm in a relationship and I'm all I'm doing is overgiving, not only am I not allowing myself to receive, I'm not getting what I deserve. And so by that 
I mean, I'm not even as happy as I could be. And that's very important for me now because, again, I've never... I don't want somebody to fill my void. I don't want to be with somebody and have that bring all this joy to my life as if I don't have my own. I don't want that. I don't want to have a relationship with somebody just so that I can be in high, what I consider high vibes or happy all the time. I want to be with somebody because I'm already in high vibes and I'm already knowing how to stand in my own power. And then I want to be able to be then with somebody who's doing that as well. But somebody who's just going to add more joy to my life and somebody that I'm not constantly seeking approval from. And that's not their fault. That's our issue when we're doing that. And so really it's about, we have to be careful with that. And again, I'm talking about myself right now in particular because me not allowing myself to receive has been a big deal because if I'm not receiving, that means I'm not feeling this, what we consider happiness, these happy, joyful moments, these feelings, you know, what used to make me happy is when the guy addict, whatever guy I was attracted to or trying to get with, what would make me happy is when they were paying attention to me and when they were, not chasing me because I've never really had that. I'm, I'm usually the chaser, but it's more when they're focused on me, even just for a little bit, or if I'm doing something for them and then they're like, wow, that was cool. Thanks. I'm like, yay. You know, they, they approved of me. They just thought what I did was super cool. So that means I'm super cool and I'm lovable. And yeah, it made me feel good. So I felt good by just by doing other things for somebody else, always. Now I want to clarify, that doesn't mean that we're not allowed to do nice things for our partner. In fact, and I was just reading something uh, not too long ago about how guys in particular, a lot of times they'll show their love through actions. Like I'm going to do something nice for you versus verbally saying it. And that's totally fine. That's different than than me going out of my way to do something to make sure that you think that I'm lovable so that you accept me and you make me feel like I'm good enough for this relationship. That's a lot different. And you need to think about, you need to think about that (laughs) because it's okay to do nice things for people. But when the intention behind it is, I need you to fill me up. I need you to tell me that I'm enough. I need you to make me feel like I'm enough. Then suddenly, we're not even really doing it for the other person. We're not really doing something loving for the other person. We're actually doing it so that they can fill our void. And the other person energetically can feel that. They may not understand it consciously, but we can always feel that energy. There's something, and again, this is my belief, about energy in particular, there's the conscious parts of our being and then the unconscious parts. Whatever it is that we are not connected to, whatever it is that we're not looking at, we don't see it. It doesn't mean it's not there. It just means that we don't see it. It's affecting us. It's affecting our soul energy. It's affecting our lives which is why, again, on this channel, I'm trying to create that conscious awareness because once we bring things into our conscious awareness, only then can we do something about it. Again, if I don't see myself as a people pleaser, if I don't see myself as codependent, if I don't see myself as trying to seek approval, then I can't ever go and heal those wounds and do anything about it. So what do you think is going to happen? Well, then I'm going to continue to connect with people through my wounded self, meaning I'm going to continue to try to find love by needing somebody to make me feel good about myself. And that's not a healthy relationship, not to me. And so I just, I just wanted to share all that with you. Again, you don't have to agree with that, but that's why like attracts like, that's what that means energetically. You, you may not see it and we don't always see it. And even when we're working on ourselves, it's energetically, we're still going to continue to attract where we're at. 
but that's not a punishment. It really look at it as the universe showing you, Hey, um, you remember those times where your dad yelled at you and called you a bunch of names and it really, really hurt your feelings or he completely ignored you or didn't ever want to do anything with you. Do you remember that? Yeah, that kind of hurt you. And yeah, that's kind of affecting you right now in your adult life, which is why you may be around people and with similar traits or the dynamics are going to be similar. And it's for us to kind of look look at and say, hmm, you know, every time I'm in this situation, I kind of start to shrink. Or I feel a little less than. Why is that? Because I'm feeling that within myself somewhere. Where is that coming from? And those are the things we need to become conscious of. But then once we become conscious of where it's coming from, we need to feel the emotion behind it because there's an emotion behind it. There's an energy behind it. We are energy. So going back to feeling our void, if we're energy, emotion, in motion, the void is what? We're void of emotion to some degree. I'm not void of hair. I'm not void of clothes. I'm not void of ego. The ego is always there. Our egos speak loud and clear. Our egos are the ones that want to figure everything out and that want to keep us thinking negatively about things. Our ego is here to protect us. So it does serve its purpose, but it overly serves it because now the defenses go up. We don't even realize it because the ego does not want to be hurt. We avoid pain by nature. That's the ego comes in and says, nope, not your feelings aren't going to get hurt today. So we're going to lash out at this person instead, or I'm going to run away from you because not, not going to feel vulnerable. No, no, not going to feel anything that's going to make me feel less than nope. So we run away, pride, ego, it gets in our way a lot more than we think it does. And again, that's for us to check ourselves. It's really hard to do that though, because that's where we need to bring back the soul being, the energetic being that to me is already within us. That to me is the soul, us, at our core. So we're getting in touch with who we are. We're getting in touch with how we feel. Because of who we are is energy in motion and energy is emotion in motion the void is that we're void of emotions and even if you cry every day that doesn't mean that you're actually connecting with a feeling remember crying is a reaction it's healthy but it's a reaction are you feeling the feeling that's different are you feeling the unworthiness in a moment that's different that doesn't feel good to do that it's easier for me to just cry and sit here and call myself a piece of shit and just really be in despair and say my life sucks and I deserve that or whatever. I just got dumped and it's because he hates me and it's because I'm nothing. None, none of that's a feeling. So keep that in mind. Being vulnerable is, how does that make you feel? Well, he dumped me. It made me feel like I'm not good enough for him. It made me feel... It made me feel like I didn't matter. Am I even lovable? And that's where we need to continue to go. I'm not doing suggesting this to torture you. I'm really not. And it really depends on where you want to go in your life. And, and if you even believe any of this, because we all have our own beliefs. This is what I'm doing. But for me personally, now that I'm filling in my own void, I'm doing it for the first time because I'm feeling feelings for the first time. Because again, if that void, if it's void of emotion. And the only way to fill in that void is to bring in emotion. And I know you're like, wait, what? Because we're made of emotions. Yeah. But if we're not conscious of it, it's like the void is there, but it's only there because we don't, we're not looking at certain things. And so really it's a void of consciousness because we are energy so we already are emotion but if we're not again connected to that if we're not allowing by allowing ourselves to feel it we're not experiencing it and so we're continuing to be void of this consciousness of emotion of a part of ourselves so guess what that means i can't share that part of myself with you 
So if I'm trying to be with somebody on a real level, in a real romantic relationship, in a real way, and I'm trying to make a strong connection, it's like, I'm not going to be able to give you me. I'm going to give you pretend me. I'm going to give you the people pleaser. I'm going to perform so that you see me as awesome and amazing. I'm going to continue to give you lather, rinse, repeat. I'm going to continue to give you things about me that I think make me look special and make me look good to you so that you'll accept me and what ultimately what love me, ultimately find me lovable, right? That's what that really means when we're being accepted. But when we're filling in our own void and we're looking at it and we're really doing it within ourselves and we're struggling doing it, none of this is easy. It's a struggle. And just because you're sad and you want to give up and you're overwhelmed and you're lonely and hurt and you're feeling all these really unpleasant things, that doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. If you're connecting to it and you're finally looking at it and you're allowing yourself to feel it, you're doing everything right. You're doing everything for you. And that's always right. Self-love, that's always the right thing to do. Because when you're loving yourself, you're not ignoring yourself. You're not neglecting yourself. Therefore, you're not going to do that towards other people. So again, when you're loving yourself, it's not selfish. It's It helps everybody around us. It really does. Because again, if I believe that I'm lovable, and now I know I can fill my own void, if I'm dating somebody, I'm not going to demand that he fills that void by yelling at him or creating a distance or always needing to pick a fight or always blaming him for everything. We tend to do these things or we back off or, you know, I'd rather work for 20 hours versus being around you. That's not a relationship. (laughs) That's not a healthy relationship. That describes a lot of relationships, I know. But I think it's because we don't, we legitimately don't know how to be just with each other in a loving way. I really see a lot of people together in a very codependent way. It's not a judgment. It's, I can relate. It's because we are more focused on trying to get them to see us and to love us and to fill our void that we can't even just sit and present us, the real us, and connect and share. Because I don't want to present the real me if I haven't connected with the real me, if I don't understand the real me, if I'm not conscious of the real me by loving the real me, how can I give that to you? How can I give that to somebody if I haven't given that to myself? So again, when we're, we're learning how to love who we are, which means that we can be with somebody. And when we're loving who we are and we're standing in our power, when we get with somebody energetically, first of all, that's what we're going to want to be with back. It's not that they're going to be perfect or that we're even perfect. It's that we know how to transform our energy into higher vibrations, which I already talked about. We're getting ourselves into higher frequencies, not in a fake way by just pretending like we are. Everything's great. Everything's fine. I'm just going to ignore whatever just happened. I'm going to pretend like everything's okay. That's low vibe. Your soul knows you're lying. The universe knows you're lying. The universe is like, you. that really bothered you and you are acting like it didn't and now you're just going to go out and ride a roller coaster and pretend like your life is just fine and dandy instead of feeling the pain or whatever it was that just bothered you. Don't act like you don't care. (laughs) So really, it's about us loving who we are. We're filling in this void or really void of consciousness is what I'm going to call it. We're becoming conscious of areas that we need healing. We're becoming conscious of areas in which we can feel our feelings so that we can connect with ourselves so that we can stand in our power and, again, continue to live what we would consider a happier, more joyous life or higher frequency, however you want to call it, but something that's going to make you feel really good. That doesn't mean you're not going to feel shitty. It just means you're going to be able to get yourself into feeling good a lot quicker than you used to because you're loving yourself more and you're healing those wounds. It's all steps, all of it. And these are all steps and choices that we're going to continue to make a mindfulness, practicing all of these things all at once. But really, I just kind of wanted to bring up companionship and love for somebody else because I really, I believe in companionship. I really do. I think some people are here to teach us. Everybody's here to teach us something. We're here to learn, I believe. 
and to grow and to expand. And the only way that we become conscious of things is if something comes along and allows us to see something within ourselves. And I totally believe in that. But I believe that when we try to be companions with somebody, we are going to, again, like attracts like energetically wherever you're at. That's what you're going to attract towards you. Because that's going to show you where you're still at. And so whatever the dynamics are, whatever's going on in your relationship, it's going to kind of tell you how you feel about yourself. And when you're feeling good about yourself and you are really starting to value you, where you can actually then give yourself to somebody, you're going to want to be with somebody that can do that back and that can appreciate that you're doing that for them. It's really hard to get there. It, it just, it is this whole process. It's really hard. It's, it's, it takes a while, but then it's something that we're just going to keep doing and we just keep getting better and better at it. It's nothing that stops or ever becomes perfect. It's just something that we just, we get better and better at it. And energetically, if you're trying to get better at it, you are going to then attract somebody else who's going to get better at it. But if energetically you're still super wounded and you're denying everything and you don't want to look at anything and the void is so big, for you, the darkness, the wall is up so high, you're literally just going to get with somebody else who is exactly the same. And you're both going to be just in a relationship trying to talk to each other through a wall. And to me personally, there's nothing joyous connecting or loving about that. It's more like a chore. It's more like Okay, I'm just going to kind of get up and I'm going to do my thing and you're going to be there and, you know, you might be with me sometimes, but, you know, we're not super happy. We're not super sad. We're just kind of there. It really depends on what kind of life you want. And I don't want that in any type of relationship, really. And I've been stuck in a lot of different situations work wise for me in particular. And so we say stuck. And if we're stuck somewhere, it's because energetically we're feeling stuck within ourselves somewhere. And that's for us to figure out. So again, your energy, how do you want your energy to be? It's emotion. And emotion, we don't just create it. It's already there. We're connecting to it. So why do I keep telling you to feel your feelings? Because that's how you connect to your emotional self, your true authentic self. It's not that we're being sensitive people and, oh, I get offended and I don't want to hear certain things. No, we're feeling whatever feelings we need to feel in any given moment on any given day, whether it's positive or negative. Both exist. Both are relevant. We need both. It's a constant balancing act. Where do you want to be in your life? Energetically, where do you see yourself right now? And it's okay. Wherever you're at, you're loved. You're lovable. You You matter. And I'm really proud of you guys because I know some of you are really trying to walk this path. It's really hard. But again, where it really started to change my life is seeing it as energy, seeing myself as energy. And now how do I make this energy more higher of a frequency? How do I change it? How do I turn it into something better, more positive for me? Not by going out and smiling and pretending like everything's like, hey, no. By feeling whatever I needed to feel and saying, it's okay that I'm feeling this way. It's okay. Things that have happened to me in my past have affected me in a negative way. They've hurt me a lot. And it is okay. It is okay to say that. It's okay to know that. A lot of us deny that nothing that happened to me has affected me. Walls up. So what are you going to attract in your life? Walls up. What do you think you're going to attract? You may not see it like that. So again, it depends. We have to be honest with ourselves. This process requires a lot of honesty, not opinions. Honesty. I'm the only one that can admit that, you know, what? I've been broken. Yeah, you know, I've been an overgiver. You know, I've never really allowed myself to receive. So what does that mean? That means I've never really allowed myself to be loved by somebody else. That was kind of why I brought up my friend in that scenario earlier is that You know, he was happy when he was in those relationships because he finally felt this sense of love and connection and relationship. And they had a pretty good relationship. But for me, it's like I never, I really have never allowed myself to be loved by anybody, 
not truly because I wasn't loving myself. So I was always shutting it out by overgiving and people pleasing and trying too hard or demanding things from them or whatever it was that I was doing that was actually blocking the energy of love. So we block that when we are not feeling good about ourselves. And so now that I'm feeling better about myself, I want to welcome that love into my life. I want that. I want to be able to receive that. And it might even feel a little scary at first, but that's fine because I'm still, I know I deserve it. And I know that I can give it back now. And so I'm ready to have that reciprocation because I think love does require reciprocation. That goes for us as well. Me loving myself. If I don't love myself, self-love, how is that being reciprocated within me, within my soul self? It needs to be reciprocated because I'm valuing who I am by demonstrating that every day. That's how I'm reciprocating it within myself. But now with another person, it means allowing myself to receive that from them. And then if I know how to love myself, I know how to love them also. But it's that we're actually loving ourselves, not that we say just say it and then deny our feelings constantly. The two don't go together. You cannot deny your emotions and then feel the deepest emotions. How does that work? That's a contradiction. So think about that. What do you guys think? I don't know. I'm going to kind of leave you with this for a few days because I'm going to go out of town this weekend. <laughs> and so here's a nice super long video just for whoever actually watched the whole thing. <laughs> so thank you again. I'm grateful for you guys. Think about all of that though. Self-love. It's a beautiful thing, but we can't love ourselves and deny our emotions and our feelings at the same time. We can't. We have to be open to feeling. Just continue practicing that and just think about that.